In this part of our Flask and Amazon S3 series, we will be setting up a new Flask project and incorporating Bootstrap. So I'm going to go ahead and make a new directory. So I'm going to call it Flask S3 Bucket. And we'll go ahead and CD into that. And if you have not installed a virtual environment already, um, I would recommend doing that. So that would be pip install env. So I already have it installed, so I'm not going to actually run this. So the next thing I'm going to do is set up a new virtual environment for this project. So I'm going to be passing in my own Python version, Python 3, which was installed using Homebrew. And venv will be the name of the folder in which our virtual environment will be installed into. And I'm going to pass the always copy flag into not use symbolic links. Okay, now that that is done, we can go ahead and activate the virtual environment. And I misspelled source. Okay, so our virtual environment is running. Notice that we have the prefix over here on the left side of our command prompt. Okay, now we can go ahead and install some of our dependencies. First thing I'm gonna install is Flask. Okay, we'll also need Flask Bootstrap. And the final thing that we'll need is the Boto3 library, which is the library that will allow us to use Python to interact with Amazon S3. Okay, so I'm going to start by creating a new file, app.py. And this file will be how we interact with, um, it'll be our entry point for our Flask application. Okay, inside of app.py, I'm just going to go ahead and put in some boilerplate stuff. This is going to be the bare minimum that we need to run a Flask application. So we're going to import Flask and then set up a new app variable. New Flask application, we're going to pass in double under name. And we can go ahead and set up a route. And we'll put a forward slash, this is going to be our root, um, basically our index page. And we'll call this function index. And let's just go ahead and return hello. Okay, so back here in the terminal, um, let's go ahead and set up a couple of environment variables. First one is going to be Flask app. And we're going to set that equal to app.py. And we're going to turn on the debug mode and set that equal to one. And the next thing we can go ahead and run our application, which would be the command flask run. And let's go ahead and expand that. So um, all we're returning is hello. We don't have anything else. Um, we're not, we don't have any templates or anything. Um, so we're just returning hello. And that verifies that Flask is up and running. I'm going to hit Control C to stop the server. Um, so what we're going to do at this point, let's go ahead and make a templates folder. And inside of that, inside of our templates folder, let's go ahead and create a file. We'll just call this index.html. Okay, so here's the Flask Bootstrap page. So this dependency, what it does is allow us to install Bootstrap without, with just a very minimal amount of configuration. Let's go down here to our basic usage. And I'm gonna paste in just this boilerplate template and return to the editor. And that's gonna be our, the template that we start off with. And so we have to do a couple things here. So in order to render a template, we have to import render template. And then we also need to import Flask Bootstrap. And so we need to new up 
an instance of bootstrap and then pass our application or flask app into it and down here in our route um, so we need to re to render the template and we'll pass an index.html okay and then we can just go ahead return to the terminal and rerun the application And we should already have this loaded in our browser. If we go ahead and refresh, now we have Hello Bootstrap and notice that the font also changed. So one way to check the, to make sure that it is installed properly and that Bootstrap is actually running is we're gonna view the page source. And we can see that from over the CDN from Cloudfla Cloudflare, we are we have Bootstrap CSS as long with jQuery and Bootstrap's JavaScript files. So since we're, since we see those, we know that we have like a minimal template. And if we return back to the editor, um, so this is a Jinja 2 template, which is a template engine that is used with Flask. And so what we're inheriting from is the Bootstrap's, um, basically a, a base template that we inherit from and that we're extending. And then we have a blank um, nav bar, which we would need to fill in. And then just our hello world down here. If we return to the uh, page source, um, so all the doc type and HTML, all the boilerplate stuff is just uh, loaded for us automatically. So this is why Flask Bootstrap makes it easy to install and run uh, Bootstrap um, very quickly and with minimal configuration. In the next part of the series, we'll delve into getting the Amazon S3 bucket set up. We'll also, so we'll include setting up the bucket along with setting up our environment variables and configuring our integration with Amazon S3. Thank you for watching.